My name is Peter Hathaway, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I'm an international broker, and according to my colleagues, I'm a pretty good one. Basically, I act as a middleman for companies all over the world. I get them whatever goods or products they might need at the best possible price. On May 18, 2006, I received an email with a business proposal. It was from a gentleman in Nigeria who was looking for 52 tons of structural steel. His name is Solomon Obiku, and he is the CEO of an oil company owned by the Nigerian government. He said that they needed the steel to build a refining facility just outside of the capital of Nigeria, Lagos. I just needed to find him a deal and give him a quote. So over the next few days, we uh, communicated through email and over the phone just about current offers that were on the market. He seemed like a really nice guy. He had a good sense of humor and, and he was very professional. After about a week or so, I found a deal that I thought would be very good for him. So I added my commission and gave him a quote and that was that. The next day Solomon got back to me. Uh, he said that he had found a deal that was better than mine. Just by a little bit, he said. And he also said that when it comes down to business, we have to focus on the bottom line. He said he was very sorry and that he would keep in touch with me for any future opportunities. Um, and that was it. Days passed and I occasionally received emails from Solomon on anything and everything. The oil industry in Nigeria, the steel industry, sports, movies. He even sent me pictures of his family vacation to Thailand. Actually, he called me before the holidays to wish me Merry Christmas. And I thought to myself, wow, what a really nice guy. He, he must have felt bad about rejecting my offer earlier. Solomon from Nigeria called to say Merry Christmas. Nice guy. But on January 18th, 2007, Solomon sent me an email which caught me off guard. He told me that he was considering running for the presidency of Nigeria. You know, I have met lots of good people that I could rely on. I know how the strings are being pulled. I came from a poor family. It seemed very far-fetched. It seemed unbelievable to me at first, but... I think I have a shot. But what did I know about Nigerian politics? What do you think? We started having regular conversations on the phone again, but this time it was as if I was the, the advisor to the potential president of Nigeria. To be honest, to be honest, it felt really good. Solomon also told me something else. He said that over the years on business trips, he had generated some commissions off of the oil company and put them into personal accounts. He said there was a, a securities bank in Amsterdam that was holding his money and that the total amount was $2.4 million. He admitted that this money was put into a personal account, but he felt he needed to do this so that he could fund his presidential campaign. He said that he needed to show strong foreign support. And that way, the citizens of Nigeria for the first time would believe in true democracy. He said that his only problem was that he couldn't get out of the country except on business trips, which were happening very seldomly. And he was positive that he wouldn't be able to get to Amsterdam for the elections. So he offered me a business proposal. He said that he would give me a ticket to Amsterdam and a letter authorizing me to conduct banking on his behalf. And he said that he would give me 30% of the total funds for doing this. $720,000. All I needed to do was go to Amsterdam, pick up the money, put it into a joint bank account in both his and my name, and that was it. He could easily fund his presidential campaign. I thought to myself, this is too easy. How could I, how could I just get $720,000 just like that? And how could he trust me? How did he know when I had the money I wouldn't just ditch him? I, I laughed about the whole thing, I was thinking it was a joke. But then I thought to myself, even if it is a joke, who cares, what do I have to lose? It's a free trip to Amsterdam. But being that this was a serious matter, I figured I should do some research of my own. 
So I looked up Solomon's Oil Company on the internet and sure enough I found a website with Solomon's name on it. I just wanted to make sure he wasn't a crook or anything like that. And I also looked up the security bank in Amsterdam, First Securities Limited. They had a very professional and very legit looking website. So after a little bit of thought, I decided I would do it. My wife was very skeptical about it, but at this point, all I was doing was going to Amsterdam for free. A free vacation never hurt anybody, right? So Solomon sent me and the security company a signed letter empowering me to withdraw money on his behalf on March the 2nd. He also gave me the contact name of the agent who would help me with the transaction and setting up the bank account and anything else that I might need while in Amsterdam. His name was David van der Sar, a 35-year-old employee of First Securities Limited. Solomon suggested that we give David $15,000 for his help, so I agreed. As the days passed by before leaving for Amsterdam, I was getting antsy. I still couldn't believe that I was going to get $720,000 that easy. And if I did, what would happen? Who would I be with? Who would be watching me? What kind of security did they have there? Was my life at risk? So I called David in Amsterdam. He seemed like a really nice guy. He reassured me that all I needed to do was come to Amsterdam with the signed release and I could have the money. The whole time I was, I was still thinking, what had I done to be so lucky? But I guess I just thought if I could see the cash in front of me, I might be a little bit more reassured. Yes. But we should get this deal done as soon as possible. Solomon called me almost every day, making sure that the project was going as planned. And just as he promised, I received the tickets to Amsterdam. So the big day came and I finally left the US. And when I arrived, just as we had planned, David picked me up at the airport, took me to the hotel, and picked me up from the hotel the next morning. We arrived at First Securities Limited and the manager wanted to meet me personally so that he could see the signed release. I showed it to him and he said, sir, you may have your funds. And then they brought two briefcases into the room. They put them on a table and they opened them. It was there. The $2.4 million was there, right in front of me. I started to feel nervous. My legs were shaking and I could feel my voice getting higher so I was trying not to say anything. $2.4 million cash sitting in front of me with the owner thousands of miles away. I felt insecure. Even the bank manager became anxious. But then something happened. Sir, I'm afraid we have a problem. There's a lot of cash here and I didn't know that. What's the, I don't, what's what, the, you do you have insurance just... papers with you? Because in our registration documents, it states that the value of the contents of the box is $2.4 million. It does not state that the contents of the boxes actually is $2.4 million. In that case, we need your insurance documents to verify the source of the money and how it got into the country. It's in our best interest to serve you. And if you supply the documents, we, we need those to release them to you. Otherwise, we're legally liable. The Dutch government could claim that this is cash used to support terrorist activities. And I just don't want to get in the middle of all that. So provide us with the documents and by all means, it's yours. But I was told- Why did I we accept the deposit in the first place? Well, as you know, I wasn't the bank manager at the time of the deposit. So I don't know. Anyway, the rules have been changed over the last year and I want to make sure I do everything legally right. So if you don't mind... Sir, I think the rules should apply to the time of the deposit as stipulated in the contract back then. It doesn't make sense to do this to, to our client. I mean, the money is here, it's ready to go. What's the big deal? He just takes his money and leaves. It's that simple. Look, David, I don't think you're in the position to negotiate Roland. a deal. Do the job that you're assigned to do. I'm in charge of this and I would appreciate a little bit of cooperation. But it's not, it's not fair. Well, I'll tell you what's not fair. I'll, if you show any more insubordination... David jumped out of his seat 
feeling that he would also lose his share, and they got into a big argument right in front of me. David was threatened with losing his job, so he finally calmed down. And I asked the manager if I did give him the right papers, if I would be allowed to have the funds. And he reassured me that by all means, if I came back with the right documentation, the money would be mine. I even swapped one of the $100 bills out of the case with my own to take back with me to the US. I wanted to make sure that the money was real. Sure enough, it was legit. And that was it. From that point forth, the money was on my mind every minute of every day. I called Solomon and he was very upset that First Securities Limited wouldn't release his money. But he called me back in a few days and he said that the Central Bank of Nigeria would release the official papers. But because it was risky, we would have to bribe the bank manager. We would have to give him $30,000. Half of that bribe would have to come from my pocket, but Solomon assured me that I would get it back on top of my original amount of $720,000. So, I sent Solomon $15,000 to get the ball rolling. The troubles didn't stop there. I have good news, but also bad news. Actually, more bad. Why, what's the problem? I got the paper that we need. Okay, so... I found out that in order to release this kind of documents, any bank in Lagos has to have the signature of the Minister of Finance. They are the biggest fish in this whole thing. Okay, so now what? The Minister wants, you know, a share from this. What sh share? How much? He asked me for 5%. 5% Solomon? $120,000. I don't, I don't have that kind of money. You, but I can't see any other way. Is he... I mean, okay, let me understand this. Is he the only guy that we can do this through? He controls all the money which comes in and out of the country. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I know. It's a lot of money for us. But we have to do something. No, it's just it's, it's a lot of money. It's, you know, this is coming out of nowhere. Do you have any suggestions? I don't know. Get a hold of me later and let me know what you think. How are we going to okay. get around this? All right. We keep in touch. All right. Okay, bye. Bye. I didn't have that money, and neither did Solomon, so he suggested we borrow it from friends or family. I wasn't sure. I just didn't know what to do anymore. So I called the bank manager of First Securities Limited again, and I asked him that if I had the right papers, if I would be able to have my money, and he reassured me that by all means, if I presented the right documentation, the money would be mine. So what should we do? I don't think it's a good idea. You know, it's... I want to send him the money because I know what it can bring back to us. It's $700,000, that's, that's a lot of money. That's... But you don't know that for sure. What if we lose the money? It's a lot of money to lose. I sat, I sat there in the room and I, I saw the money in front of me. It was, he was sitting there. I touched it. Cash. I brought the money back with me. It's real. But you don't know the guy. I know him. I've talked to him. I've emailed him. I've, you know, I, I've, I've communicated with him enough to know that he's, he's on the level. He's, he's trying listen to help to us. Yourself. No. You know what? You need to listen to me too. He's think, trying to help us. Think about your family. What if we should save some money? You know what? I am thinking about our family. I am thinking about saving money. Why do you think I'm trying to... You know what I mean? I sent him a little bit. He needs a little bit more to get things done. You know, another whatever it is, and and we're gonna be, we're gonna be, very wealthy after all this. What if it's a scam, though? It's no, it's not. How do you know? I know it's not a scam. You, you know what? I've talked to this guy enough. You don't know, okay? You don't. You don't you've know gotta, either. No, you've got to trust me with this one. You have after arguing with my wife for a week, I borrowed sixty thousand dollars from two of my best friends, and I talked to Solomon and told him that. I wanted to get that $60,000 back on top of my initial share, which was $720,000. Solomon told me to let it go since I was getting that money for minimal input, but I, I didn't want to negotiate. I couldn't believe that he was negotiating with me, but eventually he gave in and told me that he would give me all the money back. I finally sent him the money. And a few days later, he sent me the documentation signed by the Nigerian Minister of Finance. I was excited when I got it, and I quickly faxed a copy of that to the manager of First Securities Limited in Amsterdam. 
But the next morning, I received a voicemail from Amsterdam. It was the manager for security confirming to me that it was the right paper. But because he needed reassurance as to the authenticity of it, he needed one more thing, a signature of a Nigerian attorney that would confirm that the paper was authentic. The ball was in Solomon's court again. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to go forward, but I was too far in. Too far in with my own money and my friend's savings. I couldn't let them down. Solomon told me he found an attorney who could do it for $16,000. So my half of that would be 8,000. Eight grand was really nothing compared to the $75,000 I had already invested. I decided to go forward. I borrowed $8,000 from my parents' savings and sent it to Solomon. A month ago today. It's been the worst month of my life ever. I can't eat, I can't sleep, Solomon doesn't return any of my phone calls, and I never received anything in the mail from a Nigerian attorney. That's why yesterday, I bought a plane ticket to Lagos. I'm gonna get my money back, one way or another.